I am doing another out of town shoot down here in Rotorua which is this small or kind of mid-sized town by New Zealand standards in the central North Island. Check out the beautiful view, well not really, we're in some government science research department actually. Um, but yeah, I had a beautiful view from my hotel room when I woke up this morning at dawn. Um, but yeah, we're, we're inside this cafeteria that's inside the sort of this government department research facility and because uh, we're doing this this sort of corporate series of videos about fairer kitchens, about better work environments for, 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 ki for kitchen staff and so forth. So that means all of the videos we've been recording on this campaign have basically been in kitchens, next to kitchens, around kitchens, or in restaurants or cafeterias like this. So the noise environments have been active live ones. They've been like what you hear at the moment, or worse, sometimes a little bit better, but generally like, oh, pretty awful. But um, that just, I guess, the brief you've got, and you've got to uh, somehow work within the constraints of what it needs to be done, so oh well. Um, but yeah, at least it's been shooting like pretty tight locked off shots. So I can always get that boom in pretty tight and I get it locked off just there on the edge of frame. And I'm shooting with the Sankin CS1 just to get a little bit more rejection than if you're doing like your normal hypercardioid. And, um, and you can see we've got a pretty typical three point, uh, two point lighting system set up here. Key and a headlight and he's locked off from that tripod shooting with an FS7. And uh, he's off doing a bunch of off speed. Uh, shots the moment while I'm doing this YouTube video. I thought I'd take a moment to do that. And uh, you can see I'm, I'm actually, because we just most, pretty much most of the videos all just sit down in the views like this. I've uh, got my snake just sort of uh, hardwired into him like this. And uh, yeah, the handy thing is this, you can just snap off and you can leave both of the left and right XLR inputs and the camera return plugged into it and I've just got, got it like a bungo tied to the handle so yeah because most of the time I just move the tripod around for each new setup for each interview well in this case we unplugged it because he was just doing the one bit of off speed to do for the day so yeah this kind of uh, snake uh, multi pin connection is kind of handy which you can just snap off and not need to unplug each individual connection and I've got the same on the other side here um, yeah, if I was just moving around and I've got all my stuff set up just here on this chair. So uh, yeah, I don't know, a mobile little mini card, right? Not really. But yeah, so just set up in the chair and then I can just move the chair to wherever a new setup is going to be. Because yeah, lately I've been kind of embracing the whole minimal uh, lightweight bag setup, both with my Zaxcom Max and now with my Santa Vices 833. And, um, because yeah, as soon as I get amused to read Rado's writings online about yay for you know, Saxcom Nova and so forth, I must say in some areas it's very right. Like I kind of starting to maybe move away from the heavy, um, robust K Tech or Orca bags as much as I like them. But you know, I'm starting to be in a bit of a super lightweight, minimal, minimal size bag. So you can see with my bag here, I don't even have a BDS. I just have. Um, a small BPU30 battery and um, just simply to power my Letrosonics SR receiver up there and um, yeah in fact I probably should find my extension to uh, power them just off the MPF 570 batteries and I could even make it more similar and compact and I just got a spare Letrosonics LM a clipped on the side just in case we randomly go hey we're going to get a second person added on um, but uh, no it's always just been one person and, um, and yeah I've suffered a bit of firm down here just to make this sort of otherwise the back this pocket is a bit too loose so just stuff this firm which weighs nothing but just keeps everything firmly in place and nice and snug so it doesn't move about and um, oh yeah I've got my tape just bongo tied on the side but you know need a tape a per a lab to person and um, but yeah otherwise it's just just simply the 833 inside with uh, two um, MPF 970s mounted there on the bottom well, with where the L mounts are so yeah I do actually have um, the TA4 cable on the side um, in my bag that I could uh, fetch 
to run out of external power if I like, but I've been finding that the NPF 970s, just two of them, which gives me about 95 watts or so, watt hours, it's been okay for running it for like these shorter days. Um, if, I, if I had a longer day, I'd definitely be switching over to a second pair, which I've got another second pair in the bag. But yeah, like I was kind of worried about um, the battery life because that was definitely one of the common complaints about the 83. And okay, it does suck more power, but it's, it's, it's been pretty like trouble free, easy for me so far, at least on the current shorter day jobs I've been doing lately. Um, yeah, it does get kind of warm, and, but you can say I can put my hand down here and leave it. Okay, it's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. Then my fingers getting a little bit hot. But again, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Um, what else can I say? Oh yeah, so one of the downsides about having a very minimal bag, if I kind of want to expand it a bit more, like use my Cedar DNS2, there's like um, no space to like stick this in the bag anywhere. Which is, yeah, kind of a really annoying, but also, it's just sit down interviews. Um, it's okay, I can just pop it underneath here. It's actually kind of convenient because it just angles up <laughs> the 83 so the display faces me nicely while I'm sitting here rather than being flat down and being at an angle. And, uh, and I just prop this bit of uh, waist, waistband for the labs, uh, lav belt underneath this so I can see the, the, the cedar details as well. And uh, the cedar though is running off an external battery. Although it uses a third less power when you are running it um, just digital and not analog. So yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. Like I really don't need this much power for it. I mean, if I even used, I see I've still got four bars and I didn't charge this up after yesterday's shoot either. Like, so yeah, two days of shooting and it's barely, barely been used. So it's actually relatively low power door. Um, at least when you're running it digital. So yeah, that's something that I've done for the first time. I actually looped through digital because um, on my the shoot yesterday, I, I, there was the first of the days of shooting the kitchen, I was going, oh my goodness, this is just driving me nuts. Let's uh, get a better feel for what's going on. I thought, let's loop through Cedar. But then, uh, because I was bringing along my 3 not my normal recorder, like the F-18, I realized I didn't quite have right, all the right cables for the different connectors it has to run through those four channels I want to have, being one in the boom, two the lav, three the noise reduced boom, four the noise reduced um, lav. Um, so I ended up just running digital in and out, because then I could run two channels over a single XLR cable. So I did that out of one output and one input. And yeah, not only does it like, um, mean I've got these tables. Yeah, just, it's a bit of a neater setup, really. And I, I mean, I haven't critically analyzed it, but it should be a better performance as well, because it's keeping it digital and not doing an etcher AD, DA conversion. Um, and yeah, and where was it going? Um, yeah, so, so that's my first time sort of running digital um, with, with a recorder. And also the handy thing about this being, um, being able to route any track um, you know, in any input to any track, is I kind of have this preference to have my boom track be the first one and then labs afterwards and whatever else I want after that. In this case, the noise reduced. So if you look up here, uh, I can't really see it anyway. I've got Sankin CS1E boom, then Tanya, that's the, the person we interviewed, then Sankin noise reduced, and then labs see the noise reduced underneath. And I was able, but the thing is that. Uh, the number one XLR input is AES, so I'm actually setting back onto one the two digital tracks. That's okay. I can make track one actually be channel two, and channel two actually be channel three, whatever. You know, you can mix it up any weird order you want to, which, I mean, if you're not careful, could get you really confused and tripped up. But it does mean if, if you're behind the scenes, there's, there's random whatever makes it work. You can still keep it neat and organized what's up here that you're seeing, and keeping it straight and consistent from day to day how you, how you record stuff. So I kind of thought that was cool. Um, a feature that, you know, that's, that's two features, the 83 I was using on this, this particular campaign, the, the digital and, and outputs, and uh, they're just the routing anywhere to anywhere. Um, what else can I say? Oh yeah, so what I'm setting out to the um, camera over there, well, 
that was where the camera was. I was setting steer, uh, left and right, uh, which is a noise reduced boom and noise reduced uh, lav. But they will get all four tracks later on. But I feel that having a seated DNS unit here would be beneficial for them because at least they have like a minimum base level that they will try to hopefully get it to. Because I mean, in, in a studio, in the quiet environment, and reflection, and to go back and forth and tweak different stuff, you should be able to do noise production much better than what you can do now live. Um, but at least that sets a minimum base level that they should hopefully get the noise level reduction to at least that level of performance as what we're doing right now in the moment. Um, you can see it, sometimes you don't know what the level of skill is, the person's going to do the next step or how much time they've got budgeted to do it. So maybe they will just take all I've done. Um, and also I feel like it was helpful for me in the moment while I was sitting here recording and listening to it. Because A, I could be a little bit more relaxed about some sounds, but like, that's not a big deal, the air conditioning, not even noticing it at this kind of standard of shoot that we're doing. But then I would notice other sounds and I'd be like, you know what, I'm going to let you speak up at this moment and ask them, let's do this take again. For instance, um, in the previous person we were interviewing, uh, Ryan, he, um, there was this coughing from, from one of the staff members in the background in the kitchen and I just thought, you know what, I felt like that dialogue Ryan was saying was a fairly key moment of what the campaign is about and it's probably likely they're going to be using it. So let's just interject here, especially because coughing is maybe a sound you don't want to hear in the background when you're talking about kitchens and health and food and safety. While, um, you know, some random opening and shutting of, of, a, of an oven in the background that you can even see, that kind of noise is probably a passable background noise that you can live with. You know, they're, they're very different kind of ones. And the fact that that coughing also when I was listening to the noise reduced track at that point in time, it really popped out above the other background noise and really stood out. And so I think when you're doing noise reduction, you're able to see what noises do just like stab through and really still shine out. Whereas if you were listening to the pure unadulterated track, you might not be able to like properly um, discern what is actually like problematic or versus stuff that you're just kind of like, maybe not giving up, but you just feel like, oh, it's just more of that same background noise. But it's, no, it's a different kind of background noise that does like cut through like a knife and you should think that's more concerning. For instance, um, I was listening also to like, I can notice like oh, the, the oven noise and the extractor fans and the air conditioning, that was kind of being pulled out fairly nicely by the noise reduction, I felt. But there's this other like, click click ch -ch 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 kind of sound that just was sort of staying in the background and I couldn't really get rid of that without like really hammering the noise reduction that I feel would impact the vocals. Now in this case, for this kind of shoot, the corporate videos campaign we're kind of doing, I felt like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not much I can do about it. But if we've been shooting, say, in a dairy or, a, or maybe a different kind of like a more narrative, tense dialogue scenario or something, maybe I'll try to push harder to get that noise source dealt with. I mean, like, I didn't have much time to sort of figure out. I think it was the ice cream machine. I think there was that the noise was the noise source. Now, if this hadn't been like a currently operating cafeteria working commercial kitchen, that we can't really interfere with their trade, you know, maybe I would have maybe perhaps tried to push in and deal with that. So anyway, yeah, I'm finding the, the noise reduction, I mean, it probably was uh, still a financially irresponsible decision that I'm not really getting a great ROI, ROI being return on investment. But it's still, I'm finding it a pretty cool tool and it's been helping me like rethink or, or think more, more deeply or analyze different perspectives of like what's, what's important stuff to zero in on. Um, yeah, so, so, so it's an interesting experience. Like I said, it's still, I still only use it on occasional shoots now and then, so I'm still getting my head around. In fact, I've got a, my uh, iPad here at hand with, um, yeah, so I can still glance at the manual. Well, not just the manual for C, the manual for the 833, because now and then I'm like, oh, how do, I, how do I change what the file directory is again? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, yeah, and I've also, to talk of noisy locations, I've listened to my remote audio HN7506. You can see on the side there, it's called uh, 
HD and 7506 because they're the same drivers inside as in the Sony. Is it Sony? Oh, it's sounds, yeah, Sony. Um, MDR 7506. So they sound very similar to what you're normally used to, but they're inside these like heavy industrial grade for like um, airport landing crew people <laughs> hearing protection. So yeah, that also helps you get like less confused by what's background noise is just leaking through to you versus what you're actually hearing on the track itself. And uh, early morning start, so it has a nice coffee. One of the perks though, you know, of doing a shoot at a cafeteria and restaurants, we're getting fed pretty well. Bad for the body, getting a bit fat. Um, what else can I gonna say? Oh yeah, just putting SMQV on the talent. And uh, like I said, LMA is the spear. Um, and yeah. Let's just wrap this up and see how their off-speed shooting that they're doing for some b-roll in the kitchen is going. They must be finished soonish. We've got another person coming up for the next dialogue, although he obviously still hasn't set up yet for his new setup because his tripod and lights are still here. Um, but yeah, let's go prep for the next stage of the day. More shoots to be done still. And uh, yeah, it's getting a bit late in the day, but everyone's going to be rushing in for... It's probably a morning tea is what they're here for. Hey, it's the cameraman back. Hello, FS7.